SP Blitz is a really easy to use, free, simple health check for SQL Server. Once you go get the SP Blitz SQL file, all you have to do is run it to install the stored procedure. That's going to install in whatever database you happen to be in at the time. You can put it in master, or if you've got some kind of DBA tools or DBA utilities database, you can stick it over there. That's fine. It'll run from anywhere. So here, I'm just going to run it in master because I like to just install all my databases uh, scripts there. So now I'm going to switch over to another window where I've got the parameters for it. Now I'm going to start with just no parameters at all. I'm just going to run SP Blitz by itself. Now this can take uh, 10 to 30 seconds on the SQL Server. It's not blocking anyone else, but it's going through and surveying all kinds of diagnostic tables, system tables. And what you get back is a prioritized list of things that are maybe a little suspicious on your SQL Server. Now here, I'm dealing with a lab SQL Server that hasn't had backups in a while. So I've got warnings here about backups haven't been performed recently. Here's the databases that haven't been backed up. If you want more information on any of the uh, warnings, you can go copy paste the URL into your web browser no backups. That one's fairly obvious. Then you get details over here with more stuff like, for example, this database hasn't been backed up since June of 2016. As I scroll down through the list, I can see things like full recovery mode without log backups. It's been a while since I've done a check DB. I'm on SQL Server 2016 and I haven't enabled the query store yet. Stuff up to about priority 50 is urgent things or are urgent things that you should address fairly quickly. Then once you get past priority 50, these are things that we just kind of want to make you aware of because this stored procedure is really designed to help you take over SQL servers you've never seen before or SQL servers that you inherited from the last guy. We all know how incompetent he was. Now that's the basics of how you run SP Blitz. Let's go a little further and look at some of the other parameters that you can use. So if you run it with help equals one, it gives you much more details about what the different parameters are, what any known limitations are. Now you can go read that on your own time. So I'm going to go move on past that and I'm going to show you some of my favorite parameters for it. There's an ignore priorities above setting, which I can say don't worry about anything over priority 50 because I'm really only focused on the urgent things that might screw me when I'm not paying attention to the SQL Server. Whenever I touch any of my SQL Servers, I always run it with SP Blitz with ignore priorities above 50 just to get a quick sense to make sure that I'm still going to have my job tomorrow. Anything that pops up in here is stuff that where I would worry about losing my job. If nothing comes back with this particular setting, then who cares? I still probably have things broken on my SQL Server, but they're not things that are going to get me fired. Going on to the next set of parameters I like, turn off check user database objects if you've got a server where you don't control what's inside the databases. The classic example is things like Microsoft SharePoint or Dynamics where someone else manages what's inside there. Because see, SP Blitz will also warn you if you have things like triggers or heaps inside your databases. If you don't have any control over that, you can turn this switch off to not check the user database objects and it'll run much faster. This is also important in environments where we have, say, hundreds or thousands of databases on a SQL Server. This will let it run fairly quickly. Next parameter that's interesting with this is output database name. I can actually write the contents of SP Blitz's output to a specific database, schema, and table. Where this is useful is if I want to run this, say, every day, and then go back and check to see when something changed on my SQL Server. There's even an output server name. So what I can do is I can write the contents of SP Blitz's checks over to a centralized server environment in my environment. I can set up an agent job on every SQL Server that I have to run SP Blitz once a day and push the results up into my central management server or whatever my DBA development server is. So then I can see centrally from one place how all of my SQL Servers are doing. SP Blitz will create that table for you if it doesn't exist. 
And if it does exist, it just adds these rows into the output. There's a column for time in there and the server name too, so you know which server you're dealing with. Another set of parameters that comes in useful is skip checks. We can skip certain checks, certain databases, or certain servers, but I have to explain this one a little because it's a little trickier than it looks. In here, what you're really passing in is, here's the database and the schema and the table that stores the list of checks that I want to skip. So then you go through and create that table, create a table with a server name, database name, and check ID field. Then you can put rows into there that specify, in this example, I want to skip all checks on my crappy server named Skippy. This server is a complete hot mess and I don't want to run any SP Blitz checks on there. Or Maybe I have a database called HorribleDB that's utterly atrocious and I don't want to run any checks on what's inside there. Or maybe I just want to skip check number 42 across all of my databases. I know that whatever check number 42 is, I don't really care about the thing that that used to check. Classic example in here is always on availability groups. We can't tell what replica you're running your backups on. So if you wanted to skip the backup checks, you could do that by skipping the, uh, the backup last, fac ooh, last full backup is more than two weeks old warning. In order to do that, you're going to need the list of checks by ID. This is in the SP Blitz documentation as well. It's a link to the uh, SP Blitz source code over on GitHub where you can see the list of checks by ID. SP Blitz, totally open source like the rest of our scripts. You can go over to firstresponderkit.org and start playing around with the scripts, adding your own changes and requesting changes that you'd like other people to make. Same place where you can go to file bugs as well. So that's SP Blitz, a really quick, simple, easy health check report for SQL Server.